Hey guys, what's up? It's Zerfelros here. We're bringing you some Pokemon Go Battle League content. Today's focus is going to be on the Dev Diary for the Go Battle League that came out today. I uh, just wanted to do a quick impromptu video on this one because this is actually going to be really insightful into the things that have been happening behind the scenes with Niantic. Now, as you may know, they have been putting in some code to refactor, as they call it, the PvP code that helps things uh, hopefully be more in tune with how it should be right um so you can go check out the poke miners they've been an excellent job of putting those in the apk mines for us to see and also their latest episode of the tales from the mine uh, has gone into a very good explanation of what exactly the code is going to do and what it was doing before i'm gonna put a link to that in the description for you guys to check out i think it's really worth the listen you can skip around to uh whatever time i think i'll try and find the time and put it in the link as well uh, definitely worth going into to listen to it just if you want to understand the technical aspect so um, in this dev diary they've done a very good job I think of giving us exactly what we asked for some transparency to go badly right so they've got uh, a blog here I'm gonna go through it real quick and then I'm gonna follow up with um, some information that go stadium put out which is gonna be really nice to kind of explain some of the things that they went through in the blog um, but basically what they wanted to focus on is the able to maintain the battle code which the code they're putting out now is going to be better for them to go in and fix things and, and kind of update it as needed. Um, and they've also put a focus on the fast attack fixes, which is huge because that's been one of the biggest gripes of the battle community the entire time we've been playing this game. Ever since it got the Meltan fix, everything's been screwed up. Uh, Melmetal fix, I mean. But yeah, um, hopefully that'll be something that they can come at and just tackle. Um, I'm hoping that everything there gets fixed very well uh, i have the faith in my antic with the uh them putting their foot down as far as these refactor codes plus this dev diary i've got some faith they've got it hopefully in the next season we'll be able to continue seeing that faith grow and they'll kind of get back some of that trust um they've also got a battle log that they're going to be introducing this is going to be kind of like the raid log in that it's going to be able to kind of track our information from the battle and if we have an issue we can submit it to them for them to have a look at it and be able to fix it it's gonna be much easier for them to do so uh, and then they're gonna be trying to prioritize urgent bugs which is some of the you know the really bad ones you know like when we had that mel metal uh, bug they can go in and they can kind of prioritize fixing that with um with the log and they, they want to be able to use it in a way that's not going to impact us so much you know we can continue battling competitively when the next season comes around and not have an issue now um, they talk here about latency, and this is a section that has like some questions about the Go Battle that they're answering. I think that's fantastic because these are actually questions that we've been asking them. The first one here is kind of a we may one. It's about your connection and latency. Um, latency is honestly mostly going to be around their servers lately. Um, I've noticed that tons of people are like, I have a great connection. And then it is a great connection, but the servers suck. So this is just kind of like... Turn off data, turn on Wi-Fi, do a ping test. Turn off Wi-Fi, turn on data, do a ping test, and you travel once faster. That's basically what they're saying in this section. It's, it's, it, it's, it is what it is. Um, the matchmaking system, they want to debunk the matchmaking system. There is no algorithm that matches trainers based off of their selected Pokemon. Did you hear that, Poke-AK? And all you conspiracy theorists out there, I know you can hear me. I know you can hear this entire blog when it tells you that there is no algorithm and this whole game is actually based on skill and random choices. Now, the only way they could really get around that is a, like a 2-6 pick 3 kind of format where we can see what the opponent has beforehand. But the way it is now, I mean, you just got to be able to either outplay it or just accept the losses when they're handed to you. So um, I just I enjoyed this bit because it completely canceled all the people who believe in the algorithm because they're just that's just silly. And the whole algorithm thing is silly. Like if Niantic could fix their game in two years, what makes you think they could code an algorithm to matchmaking? Yeah, just no. Um, they're talking about the battle logging uh, feature. It's like I said, they're just they're going to be able to log the actions that take place in the battle. They can use that to fix bugs and things that cause issues and get those fixed quicker. And then battle code maintenance, what they're doing is they basically turn the code into such a way that it, they're able to just go in and more more consistently fix things without having to make them take a long time and also to um, have less issues while doing so. Also, they mentioned that the new code has more safeguards and visual effects are likely are less likely to cause performance issues. So I'm thinking like um, when we had the HP bar bug or the, you know, Skarmory is a lantern throwing Thunderbolt kind of thing. Like it's just that kind of stuff. And that's going to let them um, introduce features and changes without having to 
destroy the existing code. So what hopefully that means is that they'll be able to fix things without breaking something else. That's kind of what I'm taking away from this. Now, fast attacks. I'm going to take a drink because this is going to be a section. Good old water. Stay hydrated, people. Fast attacks and how are we fixing them? So they've got three different sections of fast attacks. There's desync, which we all know. Someone's off by a turn, throws the whole thing off. Fast attacking consistency is in regards to when a charge move is activated. Sneaking and not sneaking. And then they've got the post-charge attack desync. So um, your opponent gets like two or three fast moves in after a charge attack and you're just sitting there. Or, you know, you get back and they've already gotten three moves in. It's like that kind of stuff. I've had it happen to me plenty of times and I hate it. Um, but basically they kind of describe all of the different term types of desync and the, the inconsistencies and what they're trying to do to fix them. Um, the desync from fast attacks is what they've done is they've added more synchronization points. And if you go back into the Pokeminers and, and, and listen to that blog or look at the look at the APK mines and check out their Tales from the Mine, like I was mentioning, um, this, the, the code kind of explains itself and that there's so many more points of synchronization checks now that they're going to be able to keep everything in check and hopefully in line with itself so that there's no like, you know, someone's got this latency, someone's got this latency and everything's screwed up. Hopefully that this is what's going to keep that from happening. Um, and we're not going to really be able to notice all these synchronization points unless, you know, we see how smooth we're battling. It's going to be great. Um, when it comes to charge attacks being thrown and a fast move happening at the same time, uh, I'm going to, again, I'm going to pull some information off of Ghost Stadium for this one. And I'll check a link to the description of that as well for the information that they provided. Um, but basically, uh, it looks like what they're doing with all the technical speech here, it looks like what they're doing is they're making sneaking a thing. And it looks like to also, if you throw a charge move in the middle of a fast move that might KO, it will no longer KO during the charge move animation. So like if you're hit, getting hit by an incinerate and you throw a move, it sounds like that won't be a thing. Um, and I'm gonna the, the go battle the go battle state or the go stadium guys made an excellent uh, little jot about this, and I'll go over that. And they'll have more details and some examples as well. So we'll go into that, and I'll hopefully I'll clear it all up for you. Um, and then they're talking about post-charge attack. These things, they don't have a fix for it yet, but they're working on it. And that's kind of part of why there's no rating this season, because there are some things that they don't have fixed yet, but they're making all of their, they're putting in all their chips to fix it this season. I'm happy. I'm good with that. As long as it's fixed, they can do what they need to do. And then they just kind of had a quick roadmap about how they're going to be able to, you know, they're, they're going to continue working on it. And that's basically it. Um... And then they just remind us that this season is going to be no ranking, no rating, but we're still going to be able to continue to earn re, uh, amazing rewards and encounter Pokemon. So I'm hoping that they change the reward structure up a little bit because it's sort of lackluster at the moment if there's no rating or ELO or legend to play for. So uh, we'll just kind of see how that goes. But hopefully we, um, hopefully we come across some better stuff like that. But I'm going to go and I'm just going to check off this... Uh, this post by Stadium Gaming, I'll pull it up here. Now, um, Stadium Gaming has uh, we've got so we've got fast tech these things are being worked on. The inconsistencies, basically, it's saying that you know you can throw a charge attack at the fa if if at the same time as a fast attack, and it will cause the charge attack to resolve as well as the fast attack being resolved, and that will remain. What's being removed is the inconsistent potential to deny an attack. So if you're using a Hypno against an opposing Hypno, whenever you throw a charge attack, they should get a, confer a confusion through and vice versa. That's going to continue to be a thing. What else is changing? What's being removed are the solution mentioned once, but and I'm reading this, so I don't know how, I'm not reading this, I'm not, this is not rehearsed. Um, the solution mentioned once put in place would presumably make some minor adjustments to fast and charge attack prioritization on the same turn. So a meta champ survives a shadow ball from Drift Bloom and is at one HP. That trainer uses counter and gets to an ice punch while the opposing Drift Bloom uses Hex. In the present structure of the game, the Metacham trainer does not get to use the ice punch because the damage occurs the turn before the end of the Hex. So when the opponent, the opponent's damage would get through on turn two when the end of counter would occur. So they should now be able, now what will be able to happen is you'll be, the Metacham will be able to throw the ice punch and if the Ice Punch faints the Drift Blim, no Hex damage is applied. So now the damage will be on the same turn as the end of the move. So it's going to change the way that things go. But we're going to be able to at least be consistent at this point, I hope. So this can occur presently during a fast attack, just not on its final turn. So 
if you throw the ice punch before like on turn one of the hex you still get it through um but now it's happening in a different way so that's gonna that's gonna be a whole other mechanic video that we got to do uh, but basically instead of you know the damage landing on a fast move on the turn before so incinerate damage lands on turn four incinerate ends on turn five now incinerate damage and the turn everything ends on turn five so damage and everything is applied on turn five if you throw a move in the middle of that move anywhere the charge attack will register regardless of the turn as long as it's not on the last turn um and then we could also um this can affect one turn attacks like dragon breath we can deny a charge attack from occurring a post change no longer should um toxic croak in example two just fainted to an opposing hypno and they were prompted to bring in a new pokemon they have a vigoroth that previously battled and has enough energy for a body slam presently when they bring in vigoroth and instantly use body slam the hypno will occasionally get a confusion to register and occasionally not from our understanding post change so long as the hypno survives the body slam the confusion will always register so as long as the opponent survives that body slam the confusion will have gone through so we should always be able to sneak in moves but it looks like that's about all of the information here um as far as the fast attacks but i did want to bring this up because this is some excellent information and i hope that this helps you guys understand a little bit better um that's going to do it for me i'm very hopeful for season 11 again i'm going to be making a video on season 11 hopefully when they release the entire uh script or information or you know the the schedule so we can go over the whole thing at one time um otherwise i'll just make a small video about the little blog post they made but um that'll be it for me guys i appreciate you hanging out with me for this little uh, little ted talk video here i just wanted to do a video about this uh update the dev diary because i just thought it was so profound and deserved some attention so thanks guys i'll see you in the next video have a great johto tour and a great weekend bye